Hello my friends, John LaRuffa here with another Straight Up Solo. And in this episode, we're going to talk about hegemony. I am going to show this from the perspective of the two-player Automa experience, where I'll play the role of the um, capitalists and they will play the role of the working class. So let me go ahead and give you an understanding of what this game feels like using the simple solo mode, or but I will address the advanced one as well. Play a couple of turns and then hopefully help you figure out if this is something that you are looking for in your solo collection or something you want to pass on. Let's get started. Okay, and as usual, folks, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel as it greatly helps me out and I really appreciate it. Now, this is one of those massive games that takes up the entire table and not all of it is going to be able to fit on the camera. So I'll show you what I'm not showing you off camera and then we'll go back to this position because this is the most, this is the main part. So what am I not showing you? Well, over here you've got the supply stack of different things. You have the bag uh, for the votes, you've got the worker supply, and you have also some different tokens and counters. And then you will also have my uh, cards that I will use to play throughout the game. And then everything else will be on screen, but you have here the player area for the capitalist class, which I'll be playing, including the revenue and supply storage areas here, along with the amount of uh, capital that you get, that you store, and the companies that I can decide to purchase and build out in the, in the board. Then you have the working class, which represents, in this case, the, uh, the automa this time. And on this particular board, you have the population, which represents the total number of workers that are in play out here. Plus you have their um, kind of population number, which is the number of different goods that you'll need to, well, goods and services, I guess you say, to add to their prosperity and score points, basically. And this prosperity track is how you do that. You also have these labor unions over here, these trade unions, and that having those depends on how many different workers you have in the different areas. And if you have a certain amount, then you can get that union going. Okay. And then you have on here, the area where you're handling what policies are in place. And that's all up in here, one through seven. You have some business deals. You have the foreign market, which is glaring me right now, but the foreign market is a place that you can sell, dip, that the, the capitalist can sell different bundles of goods for specific prices. You have some stuff on the import taxes, and then you have mostly things here that don't come into play unless you're dealing with the state. Although there is the state's treasury over here where you pay all your taxes, and the state will also use that to pay for workers that um, may be employed in its companies. Um, and then you'll have places where the state produces different things, which will go right there. Finally, you have a taxation multiplier, and you have the round marker. And in this case, we're starting round two. You'll also notice that there are a specific number of slots for companies in blue that deal with how many capitalist companies that come up. In yellow, if you're playing a three-player game, you'd also have the private sector over here where you'd have the middle class <clears throat> building companies. And then here you can see cards that are not flipped over. Those uh, might come out and play depending on one of the policies up at top, depending on the financial policy or the fiscal policy, pardon me, you might be able to add more of those. Then you have the labor market over here, which is where we will end and where I will kind of begin my demonstration of what's going on. So there are several things you do in the preparation phase, but one of the things you will do in the preparation phase to begin the next round is you will draw the immigrant card depending on how many you have here. So <clears throat> it is telling me to draw one immigrant card over here, and then I will draw that card and see what comes up. And in this case, I'm going to be adding an unskilled worker from the, um, the working class to this unemployed market, okay? And um, the other thing is, is that you see here the uh, specifics of what you put in for the default workers. Now, I will say this. The game comes with a whole host of player aids and such, which are very helpful. These give you kind of a small indication of what you're doing. And then if you want a bigger indication, you have these larger player aids right here, which go through exactly what you're supposed to do in each phase, which is very important, and exactly what you're supposed to do in each um, action. So for instance, 
Um, you know, when I said we draw the, the immigration, we also add two in the default, it always is gonna add two of these unskilled workers there. So we have four workers ready to be employed. This is crucial. I'm just gonna say this right now. If you didn't have this, this game would be extremely difficult to play. It's kind of like playing a, a very asymmetric game without any player aids. This is an extremely asymmetric game in how it plays. And so these player aids are a must. And I think they're done really well. They are very detailed and they distill from what the rule says exactly what you need here to play the game. The only thing that I wish they had was a player aid this large for all of the turns. Instead, they have a player aid this large, which is good. It gives you the overview and that's fine, but sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of extra information, even though you know you get some of it over here. So for instance, you, it tells you about how to do the production phase with this player aid. It tells you how to do the production phase over here too. It tells you exactly what you need to do. Well, that's great, but what about the uh, voting phase? Not on here at all. And so the voting phase is not tough, but there's just little things that you have to remember. You have to bring them out in the, in the rule book, etc., to get that off the ground. It would have been nice if they had had one of these larger ones for the main phases of the game. But I digress. All right, now, how is this game played with regards to the Automa? The Automa has two modes. You can do sing simple mode, where basically what you're doing is you're drawing a card, <clears throat> And when you draw this card, it is going to, you're going to work left to right. And as soon as you find one of these actions you, actions you could legally do, you will do it. So for instance, this one says this is a voting action. If you can legally make a vote, meaning that there is a policy of this type first and or this type, if not this one, that is not on its preferred desired policy, it will go ahead and propose a vote to do that. So for instance, in this case, it says labor market. It last turn, this one uh, pushed the labor market to 2A, so it's not going to be doing that again. But if it wasn't at 2A where it was expecting to be, it would propose to go there. Okay, so that's one of the things they could do. And the other thing it could do is it could decide that it wants to employ workers. And it could decide it wants to buy goods. And it could decide it needs to strike if, if there's an issue with the wages. The wages aren't already paid up to max, which they are because of this, what they pushed into place. There's several other things they can do, but these action criteria, actually, I shouldn't say several because those are the four main actions. The four main actions are right here. This is what the, so, the simple bot is going to do with the red worker class. One of these four actions every time. And if it can't do any of those, it will activate the special action on the bottom, which is usually pretty simple. It's like getting money or tossing voting cubes in the bag, etc. And that was very similar when the roles were reversed and I played against the capitalist class when I was the working class and the capitalist class was handled by the Ottawa. Same thing, four different types of actions and then you figured out what it was gonna do. Now they do give you, in this case, some very nice specific criteria cards so that you can understand exactly what um, you want, what how you do things. So here's your criteria for assigning workers. Sorry about the focus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. So it tells you exactly what to do, Cho to choose where you want to assign workers. When there are multiple options, use the following conditions, and then it goes down. That's very helpful. And so these things make the automa in the simple form very easy to do. Now, there is one problem with the auto automa in the simple form. It can be relatively foolish, okay? So I noticed that in my first game, not this game, but my first game, that the automa in the simple form when playing the capitalist, extremely extended itself by building way too many companies because building the companies came first on that card again and again and again. And then when it came time to pay wages, it had to take a bunch of loans to deal with that. And those loans ultimately crushed it later on and I beat it with ease as the working class. That would have not happened if I'd used the advanced mode. The way the advanced mode works is that you will go through on every turn a series of checks. And these checks will assign priorities to taking a specific type of action based on the game state. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm never going to learn this because it will take so long to do these checks every turn that it will probably double, if not triple, the length of the game. Even though the bot would make stupid choices, I would rather house rule some of those things that if it get if it was to do a, an action again and again and then again, 
at this point, I'd say, you know what, that's a dumb choice. It would never do that based on the criteria. Let's move to the second one. I think that's easier than trying to figure out which of these areas is going to be more preferred based on the game state. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. In fact, I think it's a great thing for getting accuracy, but it really makes it clear in this game and in the rules, you need to really understand the simple mode before you go into something like that with the advanced mode. And I totally agree. And I also totally think that it's my impression. It's my impression because I refuse to try it. I'm sorry, because of the amount of work involved in all that, that that would take a, a, an immense amount of time. And it definitely says it adds game length. And I would agree, especially if you're playing with multiple automas, which you can. You can actually play as the state player and play with three different automas. I cannot imagine that being fun at all. I'm just going to say it right now. That does not sound, that sounds like the opposite of fun to me. So the simple mode is good in the fact that it has that because if it didn't have that, it, we wouldn't even be making this video because I probably wouldn't be uh, going through it and I would say this is not going to cut it. But the simple mode is very functional, does a decent job, and if you house rule it a little bit, it's just fine. So I mentioned that right away because that struck me in almost immediately playing the game. Even this, even with additional playthroughs, it was like, yeah, there's no way I want to even delve into that. Now, there are some times you need to do some condition checking. That's specifically when, when do you decide to maybe use an influence cube when it's time to vote. <clears throat> but that I'll just leave. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail at this point right now. So how did this game actually play? How do the turns work? Well, the game turns are fixed in the fact that the red player will go before the blue, who will go before the, the yellow, who will go for the state, which is the gray. Okay, and that's the way the turn order always goes. And on the turn, we're going to just, I'll just show you a couple right now. Basically, there are five actions per round. You have seven cards to deal with, okay, as the player right here. You will use five of those every round. You can play them similar to like a card-driven game, like from, you know, many of the ones like Twilight Struggle or other things where you can play a card uh, that will allow you to do the event on the card, or you can play the card for the basic action. But unlike any of those games, and that's where the, that's where the comparison stops, there is no like counteraction to the event. It's not like you're playing an event. You're just basically playing a card for a better version of some action. So you can do that, or you can just discard the card and do one of the basic actions, of which there are many, okay? So let me explain or go over some of the basic actions that you can do. <clears throat> As the capitalist player, you have, action, you have access to all of these basic actions here, all right? And then you have free actions. You can take one of those at the end of each turn, all right? Or even at the beginning of the turn, I believe. it. But you can only take one free action at the beginning of the end. You can't take multiple. So you can propose a bill, which is how you will modify the policies out there. And then you will vote on those later. You can build a company where you basically pay the money the company costs, put it out there, and then you can take workers from the unemployment worker spot and assign them and lock them into that company working there for one term. You can sell a company where you just discard it and then you basically push any of the workers off of there back to the unemployment and you get the money back for it. You can sell to the foreign market where you take the goods that you have and you specifically sell it to this card based on the lots over there. And let me show you what that is over here with an example card. So the way that selling to the foreign market works is that you can export these different lots. And I say that because you can't mix and match. You can do a three lot and that's it. I say you have to mix and match, I should say. You can't do multiple three technologies for 20 bucks. You can do one lot of three for 20. You can do one lot of five for 30. You can do one lot of, you know, the three for 20 for the education and one for a seven for 50, etc. So you have to choose discrete amounts to sell at those and you can't double dip. And you can only sell up to eight lots of material if you have all that to the export. Okay, so that's um, one of the things that uh, you can do. You can also buy from these business deals where you get these goods for this amount of money and then you may or may not have to pay taxes on it depending on the trade, foreign trade agreement, also depending on whether you want to put them out here and only sell them to the foreign market later or if you want to be able to sell them to the private market to basically the other player, you have to pay some import tariffs. Kind of complicated, I'm not going to lie, but you basically have to figure that out and you have to use this table to figure out what your tariff is going to be, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then the other things you can do are you can make a, um, you could lobby. So you basically spend 30 bucks to get three influence, okay, from the uh, the influence supply from the government. But I don't think it, it may go to this, the, 
Yeah, I think it, it goes. You pay, actually pay it from the capital. You go there, you can buy those influence, which is important for the, um, the voting because you can use those to break ties and to add extra votes. And then you can also toss additional cubes into the voting bag, okay? And the, the working class, so, so to sum up the theme of what the capitalists are trying to do, the capitalists are employing the working class, paying them wages in order to get the goods, and then hopefully selling the goods back to them to get revenue, because the more revenue you make, the more points you will score based on your total revenue that you're making. And then your total, well, based on the amount of capital you have left at the end of each round is how you figure out how much points you're going to make. The more capital, the more points. The worker class needs those goods to improve their population and improve what's going on. So um, improve their prosperity, pardon me. So looking at what I just talked about over here, if you think about how this is supposed to work in these areas, um, with regards to population, since we just added some more, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 population out there, which means now my population rating is 4, which means they need 4 of any of these goods that they can buy to, to basically increase their prosperity, score points, and make them better. They're also on the cusp of doing some other things. So for instance, if you have 4 greater workers employed in a specific type of business, you can hire a skilled worker and put them in your trade union, and that will allow you to get additional influence um, <clears throat> and extra points at, during the scoring phase. So very asymmetric and also symbiotic because you're making capital and selling it to them. They're buying capital. That's how they're scoring their points. And so the, the two rely on each other, okay? The state can also do similar things with regards to employing these workers. And this is controlled kind of by the game. And you, they, and you can buy from the state if you are the, the working class to kind of provide some competition to the capitalist class. The other main thing that all of us have in common is the voting area, which I'll show you in just a second, okay? So let's take a couple actions. So the first thing we're gonna do is flip over one of these cards. And it says yellow. And yellow is to employ the unemployed. In, a, in some company, someplace. Now, when you employ workers, you have to do it in a way that fills a company up so they can operate. The only place that can happen right now is public hospital because you have to have a specialized worker and a unskilled worker. So we're gonna put those in there right there. And because they're being employed, they immediately commit. They cannot be moved around later or abandon the job. They commit to working there at that amount, okay? So his turn's done. That was pretty simple. And it says here, because that was the first one on the card, it says 7B or 7C. So I look to this policy and see, well, I've got 7B. What does it say? If you assign workers this turn, get a skilled worker from the supply first. So that means I could have chosen, and I will choose, a skilled worker from the supply first. Well, which one would I take? Well, since it's it doesn't matter, the one I'm going to take is the one that it's going to want for that trade union. So we're going to put this and it says, get a skilled worker first. So I'm assuming that means I get to assign it <clears throat> right away to my agriculture. So now he, I shouldn't say my, but he has a person in the agriculture and the trade union. That's because he has four workers out here in that industry total. And you have um, a person, now you, now you have the ability to employ that person over there. And in case you forget what to do, it does say all of this. Um, yeah, because I sign up to three of your workers to companies and or trade unions. So that worked because I had one, two, and three. And that should work also because, again, you have all this information here to help you figure out what to do. And when it talks about assigning workers, it says for here for trade unions, someplace, assigning workers. Apart from this slot in the available companies on the board, you may also assign your skilled workers to a trade union found on your board. However, in the cases there is additional rule. You must have at least four other workers working in the company of that industry, okay, before you can do it. And we have that condition. So I'm just showing you all of the specifics here. So his turn is done. Let's see what I'm going to do. Well, I've got all sorts of different cards I could do. Um, and the one that I, so I have very little over here. I have a bunch of capital. The first, I'm sorry, I have a bunch of goods. The first thing I want to do is find a way to, to sell those goods in a way that's most advantageous. I've got enough revenue to pay for all these workers. Otherwise, I'm going to take a ton of loans. 
So let's see what I have. Well, I have, do I have anything that's gonna help me with that? That has to do with revenue. Mm, to do make a business deal, nope. So um, since I'm really poor on cash right now, I'm not going to buy a private island. That's not gonna happen. That's where I'd spend 50 bucks to get seven points. Uh, but <clears throat> I'm gonna hold on to that. What I'm really not gonna do is um, this one. I'm not gonna assign unemployed, unemployed workers to one of my non-aspirational companies so I don't have any out there and I'm not planning on starting any. So I'll discard that in order to do this, the action of export with a foreign um, with a foreign company or whatever, the foreign goods. So here I can sell five of these for 30 bucks, okay, which is pretty good. So that'd be one lot. I can sell seven food. Well, I can't sell seven because I don't have seven. I have six. But I can sell four for, let's take this and change as you see me doing there, for 45. I can sell six healthcare for 40. And I can sell seven education for 50. So that helps me get a bunch of money to be sure that I'm in good shape. Plus, I still have some goods left over for him to buy in case he gets something he wants to buy from me, which could be the luxury. And I've jacked the price up on those. Okay, so that means I'll get 30, 75, uh, 115, 165. So let me get 150, 65. 165, and all these then go away. I've sold to the foreign market, my turn is over. We flip again him, his card, he wants to vote. So he's gonna propose some kind of bill. The labor market is perfect where he wants it. Taxation is also perfect for where he wants it. So he's not gonna propose any bill. He's gonna to skip to the buying of goods. He is gonna buy goods. His rule is he's gotta buy all goods that will at least help him to upgrade. Well, he will be able to because he can buy four of these and he's gonna spend 40 bucks to buy four goods and or four of the luxury goods from me. So he purchases that, puts it in my revenue. And then in, because if he has an extra action, um, and let's see, one of three resources. Yes, yeah, so he won't actually buy food from me. It's kind of weird. I'm not exactly sure how he buys food because he doesn't talk about how he would buy food for me. Um, and maybe he never does. Maybe he always buys it later, not in advance. But anyway, either way, so the fact is, is that he paid me that money. Then he is going to immediately spend those luxury goods to do the upgrade. And the upgrade says spend the luxury goods equal to the population, which is four, and you gain one prosperity. And the way the prosperity works is you gain the, the amount of points that you're at plus anything before. So that's two, three points. Okay, one, two, three. All right, <clears throat> then uh, his turn's over. So it comes back to me. Well, what do I want to do? I've got all this money. Do I want to pay? Do I want to buy the private island right now? Maybe I changed my mind. I'm lagging behind. Let's go ahead. Let's spend the 70 bucks or spend the 50 bucks to buy the private island with this special card. And I get seven points. So that was kind of nice. Kind of gets me back up to where I need to be, which is helpful. Back to him now. He is going to assign workers. Well, he doesn't have the ability to do that because he needs some trained, specialized workers to do it. So he's going to skip that. He goes to vote. In the vote, he says the first one he wants is welfare education. Well, that one's he would like to see that at 5A, and that's all the way back here. So he is going to propose a vote. He's going to put that right there. His turn's over. All right. Now it goes back to me. So I can make a business deal and then sell um, the food and or this to the foreign market right away. So what I would be doing there, this is the foreign partner card here, if 6B or 6C is in place, I'd be basically saying, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this 30 bucks into 30 plus 20 is 50. So is it worth making 20 more dollars in that regard? Or <clears throat> I could buy this for seven. This would be the better one. That's, well, it's nets me 10. And that's me, so that would be 70, and then I would turn it into 110. So that nets, me, that nets me 40. Why don't I do that? So basically, I'm going to execute this card, make a business deal, and I'll do exactly what they say. So I'll make the business deal. I'll spend the 70, boom, 
and then I get the goods and then I immediately convert them into this export market right here again. Out comes the difference, so that would be a difference of 40. There we go. Back to him now. We're going to go ahead and he wants to employ again. He can't employ. He wants to buy goods again. He does not have the money to buy goods. He'll then go to vote. So he'll try to vote on that welfare um, state health care, which he wants to be 4A. So you will put that out here. Well, shoot, if he votes everything, that's going to get me in trouble. So I better do some voting. I'm going to pay. Um, I would like to see taxation go down and the labor market go down. So I'm actually going to use this push political agenda. I'm going to pay $25 to push two votes to get kind of an extra turn on it. Normally you can only propose one per action. Well, I'm going to propose we go cheaper on the money and that we go lower on the taxes. All right. So his final action now, he is going to, again, try to employ those people. He can't do that. He's going to try to do the vote. Well, luckily, I've already taken that. You can only have one vote, although he was there anyway. Um, so he doesn't vote there. And then immigration, he's already where he wants. He doesn't do that. So he tries to buy goods, can't do goods. So he goes to strike. Well, he can't strike either because he's getting maximum wages. So the last thing is special action. If able, give $20, I'm sorry, 20, yeah, $20 to the capitalist and get five points. Well, he can't do that either. So if he can't do anything at all, he throws, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, he throws three votes into the bag, three of his cubes into the bag to influence votes. Pretty sure that's what he does. Okay. My last turn here. Um, this would be an interesting move because I wouldn't have to pay taxes on half of this stuff. So I'm going to do this. Oh, but if I move half my capital, I'm not going to be able to cover the wages. That would be kind of cool to move that away. But the problem is I wouldn't have enough revenue to um, pay out all of what I need to. And that, that could be an issue. So we're not going to do that. Let's see. Basic actions here. I've done some. Would it make sense to perhaps... I'm not going to build a company. What else is there? Reveal the next two export cards. Yeah, that doesn't help either. So I'm kind of in a weird spot where I don't have a, a really great thing to do. So probably good to propose another bill. And I'd be better off with, so I'll take one of those offshore company things and I'll, I'll put that over there. And I'll propose a bill. And I would really appreciate the um, probably more workers maybe in immigration. That would also make it tougher for him because he'd have more people coming in, which makes it harder for him to assign those people and keep up with the prosperity. All right, so the turn is completely done from the action phase. That's two out of the five of them. Now we go to production. In production, we follow these specific things in order. And thankfully, we have them here. So first, we produce goods and services. Well, in order to do that, I've got to pay for everybody. So that's a lot of money here. So that's 30, 50, 80, 90, 105, 110, 130. Well, that's a lot of cash, like I said. So 130, here's the 100, and then I get 20 back, <clears throat> and he gets 30. That's where he generates all his money, but then I generate all these goods, right? So I'm going to get 3 plus 4 plus 1 more because of the gear. So that's going to be 8 food. I'm going to go ahead and get 8 of these uh, luxury goods. I'm going to go ahead and get, um, did I, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get six education. I'm going to get six health care. Now, these guys pay him also, so they pay him 25 out of the tax uh, kitty, and they produce four health care. Okay. Now that that's been done, the trade union will also, um, that's, yeah, the trade union will actually generate him one of these goods and services. He'll generate them. I want to know if that comes in, in the scoring, though. That's where you get the two points. But in the production phase, you get the influence right there. So he, you have one trade union, he will get one influence cube. Okay? After we've then produced... Then we need to cover the needs. So he has to buy four food from me 
at a rate of 15, so that is gonna be 60 bucks. So here's his four food, and he owes me $60. Okay, he's covered his, covered his needs. Then we gotta check taxes. So I gotta pay taxes first. Now taxes are kind of confusing and I'm not gonna go through exactly how it works because it is kind of a headache. But I have to pay the tax multiplier five times the number of operational companies I have, which is five. So that's 25 to the government right now. And then I have to pay from the remaining revenue I have the amount based on the corporate tax rate, okay? So that would be, in this case, it's at, set at um, 3, or 3A, pardon me. And I have in my kitty 20, 40, 60, 75. So that corresponds to 12, uh, I'm sorry, it corresponds to 24 in the revenue. So here's 25. So I paid a bunch of taxes that round. He has to pay taxes based on this matrix over here. And it's set to 2A and 3A, so 7 times the total of population, which is 4. So he pays 28. So he's going to get back, what is that, 72, 20, 40, 60, 70, 1, 2. All right, we paid our taxes. Now we go to the election phase. And this is where we are going to see what happens for each of these. Now this is what's going to happen. You get to choose whether you're for or against. Every vote that, that you put in, you obviously want to be for. Everyone that the other player puts in, he wants to be for. You can decide to back it up or you can decide to vote against. Depending on how many cubes we draw out of this bag, and first we're going to refill the cubes, I'll show you that. If, you, if the person voting for the change wins, they get three points. And you get one point if you supported that vote. If it doesn't go your way, no points are awarded. Whether you didn't, whether you were supporting and it didn't happen, and nothing passed, then then nothing happens. Nobody gets anything. Uh, but uh, so so basically, you score if your bill passes, and if you supported it, you get a little extra points. If your bill passes, you don't put cubes back into the bag. If it doesn't pass, you put them back in. Anybody on the losing side basically puts them back in. And then the the yellow acts as a neutral where it doesn't do anything for you, whether it's for or against. It just neutrals it out. In the case of a tie, the Tie will go to the person voting. It'll go to the person, put, I'm not voting, pushing for the bill, okay? Then the first thing we do is going to refill the bag. We take the number of population, divide by two. We add that in. We add in five neutral cubes. And then I take the number of companies I have operating, round up, divide by two, it's three. All right, first thing we're going to vote for is getting the labor market to a reasonable amount. He's going to go against. I'm going to go for. We draw five cubes, one, two, three, four, five. They all come up in my favor. This passes. I get three points. One, two, three. And all of these wages get to a more reasonable level, which I could set that any time. I set it right now just to remember because I'm always going to do that. The AI would do it automatically there. You just do it at the end of your turn. So it doesn't matter, but boom, I'm going to minimize the wage right now. Okay, next, these go out, these go out. Next is taxation. I'm for, he's against, he wants higher taxes. Okay, I want lower taxes. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five. Look at that, boy, is that helping me. One, two, three, no votes for him. And I had a bunch of votes that I lost big in the first round. So then this comes down, tax multiplier then gets reduced, and it's going to be a, a, a base of two times one for each of these. So it's going to be two plus, uh, well, 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 here we go. So two plus one is three plus one is four. So it's going to reduce there. And this is kind of silly. Actually, there, no, this is here. It's, it's actually the three because this hasn't come in play yet. It's kind of tough to figure that out, but we won't go over it now. He is going to be for that. I'm against this next one. This is the healthcare situation. One, two, three, four, five. All right, he beats me. <clears throat> Since he beat me, he's not going to throw in this influence, and I have no influence. Okay, so he gets this comes up. That will then um, increase the tax multiplier. So it's going to be two, two, and one. It's going to be back to five. He gets three points. 
his cubes and the neutrals go out. Mine goes back in the bag. Over here now, uh, I am against, he is four again. One, two, three, four, five, all right? In this case, then he would go ahead and contribute this influence and he would draw this card to show if it happens. So if he has more, the exact needs when you draw one, if it doesn't show up, what you didn't hear, a little dot, then it doesn't get kicked in, I don't think. I don't think he spends the one. I have to look that up. Let's do this because I don't want to get off track. Uh, actually, well, here, I don't want to bust the rest of the game up, but it does give you an inf information in here exactly what to do. And basically it says when voting here at the end, Okay, somewhere in here, talks about this. I'm just going to say it spent it. I don't remember where it is. It's someplace in here. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, draw X. So, or no, this is in this situation is draw one. Draw one to spend all. Draw the top card. Yeah, if there is an influence symbol, the automa spends all of its influence, not just one. Oh, they don't even have one that says draw one. That's weird. I don't know. Anyway, it makes sense that he would spend that influence to win. So he's going to do that, and he wins. All right, so the tax multiplier then goes up <clears throat> two more. I think times one. No, one more. Okay. <clears throat> so then these go back in the bag, and this... Goes like this, and he gets his three points. And then finally, my vote here on immigration. I am for, he's against. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it worked out where this then moves down. So that's going to help me out. He goes in the bag. These go out. I get three points. So you've seen a full round of heavy voting right there, right? So that's how that works. Then the final thing is scoring. So he is going to score. We go to the scoring phase here. Um, he's going to get two points for, the, for each of his trade games that he has. So there he goes. He gets the two points. I'm going to look at my revenue. I'm going to move all the revenue over to capital. Then I'm going to sum up my capital and see if it's, if it's bigger than the next level here or where, what I'm going to score on. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, ten. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 64. So that puts me over here. So I'm going to go 3, 6, and then score 3 more. That's 9 points. Whoops. 9 points for my capital scoring puts me up to here. So it's all about making the, the money for this guy, of course. You'd expect that's what it would be. So we scored for both of us. And then finally... We would be done with that round. We would do the preparation phase again where this guy's prosperity would go down just a little bit. Um, I could have a chance to get some new companies I want. And then the round market would advance, etc. There would be more people in this market. So all that stuff would happen. And then we would go forward. I'm not going to show you that because it's not going to enhance your understanding of the game. This has been very long. Let's get to what I think. Okay, so if you got through all that... Thank you for your patience. There's a lot to go through. And I had to demonstrate one of the five rounds to be able to specifically show you what you're getting yourself into with this game. So what do I think? Well, I'm still not sure. And that's not usually a good thing when I do these videos. There are elements of fun in this game, but there's also elements that drag. I find drawing cubes and fussing with these policies to just not be that much fun. That seems like a bureaucracy kind of thing and not in the kind that... I enjoy in Power Grid where I get all this money. It seems like it goes on and it's just like, okay, he's going to go this way. I'm going to go that way. We'll see what happens. I don't know. It's not fun to me at all. The production stuff, lots of bookkeeping, lots of moving, not that much fun. Just all orders to it. You kind of see if you, what you've done with it is fruitful, but... It's not that exciting to do. It's, it's just a mechanical thing, and it takes a while. It takes time to calculate the taxes. It takes time to calculate the wages. It takes time to get the benefits. It takes time to get the, the things. And that's okay, but it's just not fun. So what is fun? Well, it is fun to 
try to play different cards to see if you can get better actions and do better moves and kind of get the edge on things and, um, you know, employ company, you know, make those trade deals, which are cool with that. And then flipping it around, it was fun to be able to buy the right kinds of things at the right time when I was playing the working class and upgrade the prosperity there and score points that way. Um, it's fun to kind of figure out how would I, you know, employ these people at the right companies to get the trade unions. So the action part of this game is pretty fun. But I will also say this, because the roles are so highly asymmetric, what you're doing is somewhat fixed and maybe slightly obvious. I mean, I'm not sure about obvious, but you're going to do this for five turns, five rounds, right? And, and you're going to be trying to play the working class or the capitalist class or the middle class, or if you're going to play against all three of the automas, um, the, the uh, state, as best you can. Well, there's a specific way to do that. And there's a specific way to get to what you're trying to do, I think. And if you don't do it specifically that way, there's not a whole lot of, there's not a ton of other options. Yeah, you could build different companies, I guess, and you could try to focus on different prosperity things you want to buy. And, and But it's all the same. It's all the same. And for that reason, I think this game is just coming up flat for me. And one that, if you like the concept here, this does a great job of simulating that concept. And I actually do like the concept, but it's just not fun. It does not provide for me the enjoyment that a game should, should provide. It provides a lesson. It provides fulfillment, so to speak. And some of it can actually be fulfilling, I should say. But none of it seems like it's fun. It seems like it's just a bunch of heavy lifting that, that models this concept in a, good, in a good game. And I'll say good because I don't, I don't think it's a bad game. But it doesn't strike me as something fun. And, and the things that I like about it that are fun... I think other games do just fine. I don't have to, to put up with all the voting and the bureaucracy and the maintenance and the upkeep and the tax calculations and the, the whole thing. And I like math games too. Don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I like 1862, right? You can't find a more mathy payout dividends kind of thing. And that to me is super fun because of all the extra stuff that you do. But this one doesn't have it. Not getting shares in companies and stuff like that. This is just, it's just too much by the numbers. So I wouldn't recommend this game. Now, there's a lot of content that I haven't explored, right? I haven't played against two Automa playing the middle class. I haven't played against three Automa playing the state. I'm not going to play against those because either of them, I don't think it's worth the effort to try. So I'm going to end up pushing this to the sale pile. And you know that I don't do that lightly. It's just this game is just not doing it for me. That's what took so long for me to, to do the review and to... Give this because I like to give a game the most the benefit of the doubt as much as I can, but this one's just not cutting it for me. I'm not saying it's a bad game. It may be a great game for those people who are looking for this sort of thing. It could very much appeal to someone who likes these kind of economic or societal um, simulators because it does a great job with the policies and with what's going on economically. Heck, it even has an instruction booklet explaining the theory behind all of it. If you want to get that background, it's sound. It is a very sound game. And it would be a good game objectively, but subjectively for me, just doesn't cut the mustard. So that's what I think. Maybe you'll like it, but maybe you won't. If it didn't look, if nothing like what I was doing out there looked really fun and exciting for you, then I would say you're not going to find anything that is, okay? There's a lot of heavy lifting. If it did look fun and exciting to you, then glob onto that and by all means, give it a shot. Either way, thank you so much for watching. This is a very long video, but I felt like I needed to do it that way to give it, give it the justice it needed, okay? I really appreciate your tuning in, and whatever you decide to play in the future, I hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.